Welcome to this video which shows how to perform a simple linear regression using a spreadsheet. The purpose of linear regression is to build a model of the relationship between two parameters from data. This model takes the form of a straight line. If you have added straight trend lines to a scatter plot in a spreadsheet, you've actually performed a simple linear regression. To perform a linear regression, we want to find a line that best models the relationship between two parameters. As an example in this video, we will find a linear relationship between the amount of electrical energy used in a month in a suburban Phoenix metro area house and the cost of this energy from the local utility. This graph shows the data collected over a year. The horizontal axis is the amount of energy in kilowatt hours, while the vertical axis is the cost in dollars. Our goal is to find a straight line that best models the relationship between energy and cost. In other words, we are seeking values of the parameters beta 1 and beta 0 in the following equation for the line. y hat is beta 1x plus beta 0. We choose the values of beta 1 and beta 0 so that the sum of squared errors between the actual y value and the y value predicted for a given x value with this line, so that sum is minimized. The error at each point is the distance from that point to the line. So we might call this error EI. If we look at another point, this distance we might call EJ. The error distances are also called residuals. And again, to find the parameters beta 1 and beta 0, we sum the squared residuals, and then we find the values of beta 1 and beta 0 that minimize that sum. Without actually performing the minimization, we find the following formulas for beta 1 and beta 0. Beta 1 is the sum of the difference between the x values and the average x value times the difference between a corresponding y value and the average y value divided by the sum of the distance between each x value and the corresponding average value for x squared. Beta 0 is obtained in terms of beta 1 as the average value of the y values minus beta 1 times the average value of the x values. The easiest way to compute the values for beta 1 and beta 0 if we are using a spreadsheet is to create a scatter plot of the data and then add a trend line to the scatter plot. We insert a scatter plot and now we add a trend line. So here's our trend line, and this value here, the 0.103, etc., is our value for beta 1, and the 13.6386, etc., is our value for beta 0. Now, if you like to do things the hard way, you can directly compute beta 1 and beta 0 using the formulas that we previously wrote down. And so the following steps in the spreadsheet will do this. First, we need to find the numerator in our formula for beta 1. In a spreadsheet, that can be done using the Cover function. And we now multiply this by the number of data values, which in this case is 12, and that gives us that sum. We also want to find the sum in the denominator. And we can do this using the variance function, or the ver function. And here we multiply by the number of data values minus 1, which in this case is 11. With these values, beta 1 is the numerator divided by the denominator. And you can see that this gives us the same number as inserting the trend line did. To get beta 0, we first compute x bar, the average of the x values. And we compute y bar, the average of the y values. Then beta 0 is equal to y bar minus beta 1 times x bar. And you see we get the same number as we did when we let the spreadsheet compute the regression line. We often want to know how well the line represents the relationship between the x and y values in the data. We can represent this through the quantity r squared which is also called the coefficient of determination, 
or when expressed as a percentage, the percentage of variability explained by the model. Values of R squared close to 1 means that the line is a good model for the data. Values of R squared close to 0 mean that the line is not a good model for the data. The easiest way to compute R squared is to have it displayed when you add a trend line to the scatter plot. So when you insert a trend line, you ask for a linear line and have it show both the equation and the coefficient of determination. And there you have it. The more difficult thing to do is to compute R squared directly. And to do this, we first compute residuals. And residual I is the y value minus the predicted y value. Both of these are for point i. This predicted value is beta 1 xi plus beta 0. Then we compute the total sum of residuals squared. We can also compute SST, which is the following sum, y i minus y bar squared. And then finally, we have that r squared is 1 minus SSE over SST. So let's go to a spreadsheet now and compute this. We first compute the residuals. Again, this is our y value minus y hat, where y hat is given by beta 1 times x plus beta 0. So that gives us the first residual and the rest of them we compute similarly. To compute SSE, I can use the following trick to get the sum of squared residuals. To get SST, I can actually compute the variance of the y values and then multiply by n minus 1. And now I should be able to compute R squared as 1 minus SSE over SST. And it's 0 0.8037, which is correct. It's always comforting when these things work out this way. So that concludes this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.